Hey guys, welcome to Fun Learning. In this video, we are going to discuss about the hip complex. With no further delay, let's get started. Introduction, hip joint is also called as coxofemoral or femoroacetabular joint. I hope so you all know that the pelvic bone is also known as oscoxa. Hence, the hip joint is also called as coxofemoral joint. Hip joint is basically an articulation between the acetabulum of the pelvis and head of femur. An hip joint comes under ball and socket variety. As the ball and socket variety is triplanar in nature, the hip joint has three degree of freedom. That is flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, media rotation and lateral rotation. The primary function of your hip joint is to support the weight of your head, arm and trunk in static as well as in dynamic posture. Now let us discuss about the proximal articular surface of hip joint. Acetabulum which is a arts arse shoe shaped structure that is present on the lateral aspect of your pelvic bone forms the proximal articular surface of the hip joint. Three bones contribute to the structure of acetabulum. Ilium contribute about 2 by 5th of acetabulum. Ischium is about 2 by 5th of acetabulum. Pubis is about 1 by 5th of acetabulum. Full ossification of the pelvis occurred between 20 and 25 years of age. And this acetabulum has three parts namely the deepermost part, the periphery part and the notch that is present on the inferior aspect of your acetabulum. The deeper part of the acetabulum is referred to as acetabular fossa. The peripheral part of acetabulum is referred to as the lunate surface. And the notch that is present on the inferior aspect of your acetabulum is referred to as acetabular notch. This lunate surface is covered by an hyaline articular cartilage. Hence, in acetabulum, the lunate surface alone take part in the articulation of hip joint. The deepermost part, that is the acetabular fossa, does not take part in the articulation of the hip joint. Instead, this acetabular fossa will provide you an negative intra-articular pressure. And there comes acetabular fossa. This acetabular Sorry, acetabular notch. This acetabular notch is spanned by a ligament known as transverse acetabular ligament through which the blood vessel pass into the center and deepermost part of your acetabulum which is referred to as acetabular fossa. The normal functioning of your hip joint, your acetabulum has to cover the femoral head in a proper manner. If it does not occur, it may result in dysfunction. For normal functioning, recover femoral head coverage by the acetabulum. Femoral head coverage is largely determined by the acetabular depth. And this acetabular depth is measured by the center edge angle, which is nothing by a, but an angle that is formed by a line which is connecting the lateral rim of the acetabulum to the center of the femoral head and the vertical line that is drawn from the center of the femoral head. So it is an angle that is formed by a line which is connecting the lateral rim of the acetabulum to the center of the femoral head and the vertical line from the center of the femoral head. So this is central edge angle. This central edge angle, if it is less than 16 degree, dysplasia is confirmed. If it is between 16 to 25 degree, then there may be a possibility that you may have dysplasia. Normal angle is nothing but greater than 25 degree. Now, let us discuss about the acetabular rabrum, which is similar to the glenoid rabrum, which is on the shoulder joint. This acetabulum rabrum uh, is attached to the periphery of your acetabulum. The function of this rabrum is to deepens the socket and increase the concavity of the acetabulum thereby increasing the concurrency of the joint. Third point, it acts as a seal to maintain negative intra-articular pressure and enhance stability. As I already said, acetabular fossa is the one which provide you the negative intra-articular pressure. That negative intra-articular pressure is kept within the uh, acetabulum, within the articular surfaces by the help of your acetabular rabrum and at the acetabulum rabrum we have certain nerve endings that is going to provide you the proprioceptive feedback and also it acts as a source of pain. This rabrum is very important. If your rabrum is compromised that is if your rabrum get injured 
that may increase the friction stress which leads to the deterioration of the articular cartilage of your hip joint that going that leads in oa which is nothing but osteoarthritis and i already said transverse tibial ligament is believed to serve as a uh, primary as a tension band between the antero inferior and postero inferior aspect of your acetabulum which going to protect the vessel which is traveling underneath it to reach the edge of the femur why why i'm discussing about this under uh, acetabulum rebrum is uh, previously at the past what i have uh, mentioned is that this transverse acetabular ligament is more or less a continuation of your labrum but there is no experimental data to prove that the transverse acetabular ligament is a continuation of your acetabular labrum so distal articular surface so head of the femoral femur head is nothing but but which forms the distal articular surface right so that is covered by an iln articular cartilage and this is more or less two third of the sphere except at the fovea capitis which is uh, situated at the center of your femur femoral head all the other area is covered by the iln articular cartilage and this fovea capitis provide an attachment to the ligamentum teres which we will discuss later now let us discuss about the angulation of femur in detail now let us discuss about the angle of inclination angle of inclination is nothing but an angle that is formed between an axis which passes through the femoral head and neck and the longitudinal axis of the femoral shaft so it is an angle that formed between an axis which passes through the femoral head and neck and the longitudinal axis of the femoral shaft uh normally it is 125 degree it may varies from 110 to 144 degree it varies between individual and sometime within the person itself it is reduced in female and at birth the angle of inclination is 150 150 degree and it goes on decreases and reaches about 125 degree in the case of adult the increase in angle of inclination is referred to as coxa valga and decrease in angle is referred to as coxa vara now let us discuss about coxa valga in detail uh, the increase in the angle of inclination results in the instability of your hip joint that is it decreases the contact area between the proximal and distal articular surface hence it results in the instability and also it decreases the lateral trabecular system density i'll explain about what is trabecular system in the next video now try to remember this coxa valga decreases the density of your trabecular system why because the weight bearing line wbl stands for weight bearing line comes closer to the shaft thereby diminishing the shear or bending force across the femoral neck as uh, the trabecular system density uh, increases in response to the stress that is placed on that particular bone if the stress and force uh, to the particular bone decreases the density of your trabecular bone also trabecular system also decreases and the most important part is that the moment arm of your abductor muscle decreases if the moment arm of a particular muscle decreases that may results in that may results in muscular inefficiency and the weakness of the muscle as the abductor muscle get weakens it cannot able to counteract the gravitational adduction moment hence the gravitational adduction moment is unbalanced and also the abductor muscle get weakens the joint reaction force increases that results in the degenerative changes which is nothing but impingement or rebrum tear so these are the five points that you have to remember under coxa valga that is Uh, the articular surface contact area decreases that may results in instability the trabecular system density decreases the momentum of your abductor muscle dec decreases that results in the weakness of the muscle so that it cannot able to counteract the gravitational adduction moment and also the weakness of abductor muscle increases the joint reaction force which may results in degenerative changes now let us discuss about coxa vara which is exactly 
ulta to that of coxa valga. That is, the decrease in the angle of inclination results in coxa vara. Here, it results in instability. But at coxa vara, the stability increases. The muscular efficiency and the momentum of your abductor muscle increases and the joint reaction force decreases. The only one disadvantage in the coxa vara is that the increase in uh, bending force increases the lateral tubercular system. But it may also result in the fracture of your femoral neck. The increase in shear force along the femoral neck will also increase the predisposition towards a femoral neck fracture. So, coxa vara may also result in slipped capital femoral epiphysis, which is nothing but at the level of the epiphysis, your femoral head get, may get displaced. So, at the level of your epiphysis, which is nothing but glute plate, your femoral head may get displaced. Now, let us discuss about the angle of torsion. So, this angle of torsion is nothing but an axis, an angle that is formed between an axis which passes through the femoral head and neck and an axis which passes through the femoral condyle. So, it is formed between an axis which passes through the femoral head and neck and an axis which passes through the femoral condyle. At newborn, it may be 30 to 40 degree. Um, it decreases to 15 degree in the case of adult. The angle decreases about 1 by 1.5 degree each year until your skeleton get matured. At male, it is approximately 15 degree and at female, it is approximately 18 degree. The femoral antiversion is a condition where the angle of torsion is greater than 15 to 20 degree. And what are the effects of antiversion? So, because of antiversion, your biomechanics and function of your hip may get altered. And this antiversion reduces the joint stability because it exposes the articular surface more. And also, the moment arm of your abduction muscle decreases. Hence, your abductor muscle get weakened. It cannot able to counterbalance the adduction tuck. Right. And also, in order to maintain the adduction torque, you need more and more abduction uh, torque, right? So, the additional abduction torque may induce arthritis and also it may result in gait deviations. As I already mentioned, in femoral antiversion, the joint stability decreases because the more articular surface get exposed. Congruency decreased. In order to increase the congruency, the pressure from the anterior capsular ligamentous structure and also the anterior muscle may rotate your femur medially. That results in medial femoral torsion. The person with femoral antiversion will walk in a toe in position. That is, their toe will be pointing inwardly. Okay? Femoral retroversion. The ulta of your femoral antiversion, nothing but the angle of torsion is less than 15 to 20 degree. That creates problem which is opposite to those of femoral antiversion. Here, the contact area between the articular surface increases. That may result in rebral tear and impingement of structure. In order to reduce the hip pain, the people with femoral retroversion will walk with a toe out position. That is, their toe will face outward. Now, let us discuss about the articular congruence in detail. Now, let us discuss about the articular congruence. Generally considered as a highly stable joint. That is, generally, hip joint is considered to be the highly stable joint. But only a portion of your femoral head do articulate with the acetabulum. Um... The congruency of your hip joint is at maximum when your leg is in flexion and slight lateral rotation. So at this uh, position of your hip, the congruency of your hip joint is at maximum. At weight bearing, the congruency increases because of elastic deformation of acetabulum. As I already mentioned that acetabular force is the one which provide you a negative intra-articular pressure. And your, there is a positive atmospheric pressure outward that plays a role in stabilization. 
because it maintains the contact between the articular surface. And I already said a labrum is the one which acts as a seed that maintains the negative intra-articular pressure. If there is any tear of the labrum, that may result in instability. With this, I am completing today's video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Stay home, stay safe.